Hi guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 108, and today I wanna to talk about the art and science that goes into providing audiologic care, particularly when fitting and programming hearing aids. Uh, but before I get into it, you could do me a huge favor, click the like button, helps out the channel a lot. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well, so you never miss one of my new videos. Uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. So. Um, the reason that I want to talk about this particular topic today is that it's a highly debated topic really inside of probably every profession, but it is also highly debated inside of the profession of audiology. And what I mean is that there are certain individuals who believe that either the science is more important or that the art of fitting a hearing aid is more important. And, you know, I have my own opinions on it, but, you know, let me kind of expand upon this a little bit further. Um, I used to be a massage therapist. I don't know how many of you know that, but when I got out of the military, I went through massage therapy school, uh, started my own practice doing massage therapy while I was going through undergraduate university. And, you know, that was something that really helped me kind of understand um, this difference between the art of something and the science of something. And so as it relates to massage therapy, when you think about the science of massage therapy, um, it's really important to have a deep understanding of musculature, right? And how the body moves and how, you know, different, you know, medical conditions can influence how the human body reacts to something. And if you don't have a good understanding of the science behind human anatomy and all of that, then in physiology, then you're not going to be a very good massage therapist, right? And, and I just think, you know, I've had a million massages. I don't know. I've had a lot of massages from a lot of different people. And you can always tell who does not have a good foundational understanding from the science side of like human anatomy and physiology. Uh, for instance, if you're going to be massaging someone's leg, right, like their thigh, uh, it's technically called your quads, right, your quadriceps muscles. And it's called the quadriceps because you have four muscles, quad, four muscles inside of your leg, of the quadriceps group, right? And if you're a massage therapist and you are unaware of that and you only end up massaging two of those muscles inside of that muscle group, then you are missing two of the muscles and massaging all four of them is typically very important when you're providing massage therapy care, especially if you're working with an athlete or someone who has a medical condition or something like that. And so, you know, I've been to massage therapists who like, they hit every single muscle and it's perfect. And then I go to some that they're like, they hit half of them and they don't, you know, it, they just don't have an understanding of what they're actually doing. And then on the other side of that, there's an art form that goes along with it. So like a, knowing how to apply a certain amount of pressure or if there's a knot or contracture inside of a muscle, techniques that you can use to alleviate that and being able to kind of like feel that out as you go along. And there's some massage therapists who have like no understanding of that and, and some who have a deep understanding of that. And you can technically go to someone who's like really good at the art behind massage therapy and someone who's really good at the science behind massage therapy and then someone who's really good at both of them and you can totally tell who those people are. Now, I know that it seems like I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I explain that to make a point. When it comes down to audiologic care, there is a certain science or understanding of the science behind, you know, hum or the ear anatomy, the ear physiology, um, you know, uh, psychoacoustics, acoustics, all of that stuff. It's important to have a, a detailed understanding of the science behind what we're doing. Um, and that includes doing certain fundamental procedures like test box measures and realer measurement and validation outcome measures, like all of these different things that need to be done that are backed by science and how you do them, right? And then there's the art form side of it. So when you're applying all of you know, the amplification with hearing aids and all that, being able to listen to patient feedback and understanding how they're articulating something might mean that you need to adjust the hearing aid programming in, in one way or another. And if you don't have an understanding of the art of applying amplification, you're not going to achieve a really, really high level outcome. And so kind of the way I equate it is, is that you can have someone who has a really deep understanding of the science behind audiology, and they will probably get you a good outcome, 
right? And then you can go to someone who conversely ha doesn't have a good understanding of the science behind it. They might have a really good understanding of like being able to understand what, what patients are trying to tell them and manipulating devices that way. And you'll get a good outcome with that. But the problem is, is that we're not looking for good outcomes. We're looking for great outcomes. And the only way to get a great outcome with amplification, with hearing aids, is to have a really good understanding and application of the science behind amplification and a really good ability to uh, apply your craft or your art form to doing amplification. Now, a lot of people will get irritated with me because I'm such a like uh, stickler for realer measurement, right? I mean, I, realer measurement for everybody, you know? Um, except in very, very few cases where you can't do it. Um, but in general, the reason I'm such an advocate for realer measurement is because if you don't know, if you don't have a foundational understanding of the science behind what's actually happening inside of someone's ear canal when you're applying amplification, it's really hard to make an educated decision on what to do next from the art form perspective. Now, I truly believe that there are uh, clinicians out there and, and there's successful hearing aid practices out there who don't follow best practices at all um, because they're really good at the art form and it, they, at least they can get patients happy enough to keep their hearing aids, right? On the other side, I think that there's clinics out there who follow a lot of best practices, but they're horrible at the art form side of it and they can usually get good outcomes and their patients will wanna keep their hearing aids and they continue to exist, right? But the really good clinics are the ones and the really good clinicians are the ones who've developed this ability to incorporate the art form with the science. Let me give you an example of art versus science here. So if you are going to be treating someone with hearing aids and doing realer measurement, you want to make sure that what you're going to be doing with that device is capable of meeting their, their hearing loss prescriptive targets, all right? So we do this with realer measurement. And based off of that, typically individuals cannot accept the full level of amplification right off the bat. So what do you have to do? You have to back down their levels of amplification uh, to essentially some level of comfort for that patient. But it doesn't stop there, right? You have to then over the course of time as their brain adapts, you have to gradually build them back up to their full prescription. That is the art form behind it. So you have the science, which is like, let's make sure that we can measure and actually get them up to their full level of prescription. And then understanding that you can't just send them out your door with them like wincing at every sound, you have to back it down and then gradually build them up into it and help them explain or explain to them and help them understand why you're taking that approach. That ends up resulting in someone who has their hearing aids eventually fit up to their full prescriptive targets. They may have been giving other feedback as they, along the way where you have to increase you know, noise reduction in certain situations, or you might have to taper off some high frequencies or reduce low frequency or increase low frequency or whatever above and below their prescriptive targets. But it doesn't change the fact that you can't get the optimal outcome until you set the baseline properly with the science behind providing audiologic care. Now the argument against doing realer measurement in this particular scenario is that no one can accept their full level of prescription. So why do real ear measurement? And I would understand where that's coming from. That's coming from the standpoint of at the beginning, people typically cannot take the full level of amplification. So there's two approaches. It's either you do it and then you back them down and gradually build them back up into it, or you just don't do realer measurement. You do first fit on a hearing aid. It significantly under amplifies typically a variety of different frequencies. I don't care what people tell you that like, oh, every time I do it, it seems to come close. Let me tell you, I've probably done more realer measurement on more devices, uh, both prescripted and non-prescriptive devices than anybody on this planet right now. And I can tell you that it is very, very very rare to see a hearing aid hit 90% of a prescriptive target uh, with first fit. So I just do not buy that. So now let's wrap this up. So if you were to ask me if I would prefer to go to someone who is really good at the science behind, you know, fitting a hearing aid, or if I'd rather go with, with someone who's just got a ton of experience with the art, but they don't follow any of the science, um, to be honest with you, I'd, I'd have to take the one who understands the science behind what they're doing, um, even if they are not developed enough yet to understand the art that goes behind it. Um, I know that everybody has a different, you know, preference when it comes to this. Some people are like, no, nah, I'd take the, the dude with experience all day long or, or the lady with experience all day long and I totally get it. You know, you do what's comfortable for you, but really what you're looking for is you're looking for someone who employs best practices, the foundational science behind fitting a hearing aid with the art of doing it as well.
And so if you can find that unicorn that's out there, you need to go to that provider because that is gonna be the individual who takes whatever hearing aid you go with and gets the most out of it, all right? So there you go. Hopefully that made uh, some cohesive sense. Um, don't ask me for a massage. I don't do massage therapy anymore. Uh, I barely ever give my wife a massage anymore. So uh, that being said, guys, I really appreciate you hanging out with me this morning. Um, who you got in the Super Bowl? Um, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to go with Bengals. So Eric Fleck person, um, if you're hearing me uh, in this vlog, uh, giving you a little shout out. Uh, hopefully Joe Burrow pulls it out for you guys. But as always, guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.